Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to select a specific record in a subform. So when you open the parent form, you can then select which one of those subform records is selected using your VBA code. Now, this is a developer level tech help video. That means you're going to need to know a little VBA before we get started, but that's okay if you've never done any VBA programming before. We only need a couple lines, I think like four lines of code, but you got to know where to put them. So go watch my intro to VBA lesson first so you get the ins and outs. About 20 minutes long, teach you everything you need to know, then come on back. Today's question comes from Kara in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of my Platinum members. Kara says, I have a continuous form showing a master list of all of my orders sorted by date. Okay, gotcha. Is there a way I could double click on an order, have it open up the customer's form, and then on that customer form, select that specific order from the order subform on that form? Okay. It, it took me a few minutes to get what Kara is saying, but I, I understand. She's got a customer form with an, a subform on it listing the customer's orders. Much like I have customers and contacts, right? In our tech help database, we have the regular customer form, but then when I was teaching subforms, we've got the customers with contacts. Okay, so you got all the customers' contacts here instead of making that a separate form. She's done the same thing, but in, instead of contacts, she has orders here, so she can see all the customers' orders. That's a good idea. I've done that in a couple databases too. So what she's saying is she's got a master list of contacts. Let's say it looks something like this, okay? And she wants to pick a contact or pick an order, double-click on it, open up that customer form, and select that specific record in the subform. Okay, that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, I've got another database that I built that we can use for this. It's my follow-ups database. Go watch this video if you haven't yet. I've got a master list of follow-ups, and follow-ups are basically contacts. So we can click on a follow-up and then open up the customer contact form and show that record selected. So go watch this if you haven't yet. All right, so here's my follow-up database. I think this is after follow-ups lesson six, but you don't need to go that far. We've got a master list of follow-ups. Here they are. These are all of the follow-ups that I have and all of the customers here. And I can double click on it now to open up just that specific customer form. Okay, now, as you learned, if you watch the follow ups video, every follow up is basically a contact that's marked for a follow up. Right, so when someone comes in, I can type in what we talked about, mark it as a follow up, and then it will show up on my master follow ups list. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a particular follow up, double click on it. Instead of opening this form, we're going to open up this form, the customers with contacts, it will then select the specific contact that you're on, that you clicked on on this form. See what I'm saying? It's the same thing as if you were doing customers and orders, uh, vendors and products, right? You pick a product from a master list, it opens up the vendor form and selects that product in the subform. Whatever, wherever you've got a, a form subform relationship, if you've got a master list showing all of the subform items somewhere else, you can then open up the parent form and select that record in the subform. It makes it easier to find it instead of having to dig through here. And you don't want to filter this because then you can't see everything else. That's kind of silly. So I'm going to open it up and then we're going to select that record. We're going to find it. Okay. Now, one little fix we got to make here. I did notice that in this customer contact form, this got too small because I made this a little bit bigger in the follow ups database. So we just got to make this subform a teeny bit bigger. That's all. Gonna come in here, maybe about out to about there. I resized it in the follow-ups uh, videos, and I didn't fix that. So let's take a look. Okay, that looks well a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more. Let's uh, let's come out to right about there. Okay. All right. What do we look like now? All right. Perfect. All right. So what's the mindset here? Well, we know how to double-click on something and open up another form, right? We do it right here. I'm going to open up a different form, and this time we're going to open up the customer contact form, okay? Then we're going to move to, we're going to change our focus. We're going to do command, go to control the subform. Then we're going to go to control whatever field we're going to search on. That's going to happen to be the ID, so we have to put the ID on this subform. No way around it. There's a trick I'll show you in the extended cut, but you got to have it on here. Then we're going to do a find record and find that specific record. Okay, so the first step is to modify the contact form, which is the subform. 
And we have to have the contact ID on here. So we're just going to put it up front. We're going to slide all of this stuff. Let's make this a little bit smaller now because we don't have a lot of room in here. We're going to slide all this stuff to the right. And we're going to put that contact. Let's just copy one of these guys. Copy, paste. Slide it over here to the left. I like to have my IDs on the left. That. Double click. We're going to get rid of the uh, format that's in there. We'll set this to contact ID. Change the name to contact ID. Uh, I like to make my IDs gray because we're not, can't change them, right? Okay, and we can, you know, you can take it out of the tab stop if you want to. Go to other, make it so it's not a tab stop. Okay, already is good. So it doesn't even have to be in the tab order in the right spot. But I like to do that anyway. Tab order. Auto. Okay. All right. And if you want to, you can just say this. Actually, what I sometimes do, I cheat. I just do this, right? And I go ID and just put some pieces in there. If it's, if it's headers that you don't change often, that's okay. That's a little trick. If you do edit this a lot and move these things around, yeah, I like to have individual labels. But for, for forms I hardly ever work with, just put a, put a bunch of spaces. Okay. <laughs> Save changes. Open it back up again. All right. So now we got our IDs in here. And you need that for this trick. Okay. All right. So this is the uh, control here that has the double-click event on it that opens up the customer form. Let's switch what form we're opening up. So design view, open up this guy's properties, go to events, and go to the on double-click event. And I cover all this in those follow-up videos. This is a double-click event. All right, hit the dot, dot, dot for the builder, and you got do command open form customer F. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to open customer F. It is, what is it? Customer contact F now. Customer contact F. All right. And still open up that same customer's record where it's the customer combo. Good. Okay. Now, next step is we have to shift our focus. We have to move the focus, the, the cursor, move the cursor into the contact F subform. If you look at this guy in design view, okay, this is a control. This guy here is one control called contact F. We got to go there. All right, so that's going to be a do command dot go to control contact F. All right, so now we're sitting in contact F. You should be sitting in the first field in the tab order, but specifically our contact ID isn't in the tab order. So now we're going to go to control the contact ID. So same thing, do command dot go to control contact ID. All right, so now we're sitting in the contact ID. Now, we can issue a find record command. We want to find a specific record. What record? Well, the contact ID has to be equal to the contact ID that we're on on the current form, which is our follow-up F. All right? And our follow-up F right here, it's this guy. Where's the contact ID? Oh, it's... All right, so the contact ID... It's kind of weird the way Access does this. Contact ID doesn't have to be on this form as long as it's in the record set under the form. And this guy is based on the follow-up queue. And follow-up queue has a contact ID in it. Right there. Yeah, I know, it's weird. If it makes you feel better, sure, you can put the contact ID on this form too. But sometimes you got to have it, sometimes you don't. When in doubt, just add the field. If you're not sure if it's going to work or not, add it. If you want to see if it's going to work without it, remove it. But in this case, you don't actually have to have it on the calling form. The recipient form does. So now, now that we're sitting on the contact ID, we can say do command dot find record contact ID. So find the record where the current field matches whatever the value of the contact ID is in the calling form, which for me happens to be the follow-up F. Make sense? Okay. <laughs> All right. Save it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Let's open up our follow-ups. I'll pick this one here where he talks about the Borg invasion. Double click. Boom. Well, there's only one on that one. Okay, it worked. <laughs> Let's add another one. Let's do, uh, all right, my stopped by one. Ready? Double click and go. See, look at that. It opened up customers of contacts on my customer record and selected the record that I clicked on. See, record 15 there. Okay, let's do one more to make sure it's working. Let's do, let's do Getty Lee. Double click right there. Call about whatever. Okay. That's how you do it. The trick is, you have to go to control the subform, then go to control the control you're searching on, then do your search. Now, I made the mistake of 
using this kind of uh, go to control logic and automated stuff. Don't don't use go to control, find record, all those things in anything that's going to run automated while you're not there. I used to use timer events to run stuff to do, you know, adding records. No, 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 don't do that. Only use go to control, go to record in things like this, where you're going to click a button and watch it happen. Because if other events take place that, you know, grab the cursor's focus, if another, like a timer event pops up in the background, it, it's going to mess up the whole thing. So only put this stuff in buttons that you're going to click on and do something. Okay? Now, you don't want to see that ID there. You got to have it on the form. And you can't make it invisible fully because you got to be able to click on it and go to it and search to it. So how do you, how do, you do that without having to see that ID there? Well, we'll talk about that in the extended cut. In the extended cut, we're going to draw a big red X over... No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to draw an X. But I will teach you how to hide it so the user doesn't see that ID column there. We'll get rid of it. You still need it, but we'll, I'll show you how to hide it. It's a, little, it's, it's a little trick, but I'll save it for the members. <laughs> but there you go. There's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. hope this helps somebody. I get asked this all the time. I think I covered this in one of my developer lessons somewhere, but this is a popular enough question where... It was time for a video. So hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.